Hello everyone, this is Purnima. So today we are going to talk about product prioritization. We will discuss about why it is important to have a framework, why is it important to have a clear roadmap defined and some of the practical aspects of prioritizing different uh, features there in the roadmap and considering that it's uh, a part and parcel of our uh, regular lives as product managers, I hope you find it useful. So I'll quickly introduce myself. Uh, so I have done my MBA from the Indian School of Business. I have around uh, seven years of product experience. I started my career with uh, Access Bank and moved to Red Bus, uh, part of Make My Trip uh, group in India. So I worked uh, in travel industry for around uh, five years into product management, worked on payments, customer care management, and uh, have taken care of the Latin American business for uh, Red Bus and uh, currently I'm working for Amazon. Uh, I take care of their uh, product portfolio for uh, online merchants uh, as part of Amazon Pay team. Uh, so coming to the product prioritization. So let's understand why it is important to have a, pro uh, a prioritization charter and why should we have a roadmap defined at all. Uh, this, my simple answer would be that uh, we we can never have it all. Uh, we, I, in the beginning of career, I always uh, wondered why not have uh, a large engineering team who can build everything I wish for and uh, why should I worry about the cost of building the product at all. Uh, but the most realistic answer is that uh, the return of effort is very important in terms of what you're building. It's not just about the cost of building the product because a lot of product research goes into it, a lot of product marketing goes into it. There will be sales folks, there will be field folks who will be working with you in order to see the success of the product. So it's important to prioritize because uh, the, the right product hitting the market at the right time will make sure that you are not losing the opportunity in the market because there are always competitors who can take away the opportunity. And this actually gives you a good visibility of uh, the overall uh, company or the particular vertical which you are taking care of. It, it makes you, uh, it sets you more discipline in terms of what kind of future roadmap you will have in next one quarter or sometimes roadmaps are even done for next 18 months. So at the end, the short answer for why prioritization required is, is to make sure that you are building the right product and uh, because we, we need to make the right choices at the end. So uh, the negative side of it or the other side of it of not having the prioritization framework is that we receive a lot of ad hoc requests from different stakeholders. We have, uh, so on a daily basis, you will hear as product manager that uh, there are sales folks, there are customer support folks who come to you and say that this particular client needs a feature very passionately, it's very urgent or somebody faced an issue anecdotally and they will say that this looks to be the, uh, the the main pain point which customers are facing and we need to solve for it. So it's important to not get digressed with all these uh, anecdotal feedbacks or the uh, created urgencies. And even as PMs, we can get uh, diverted towards building the cool things which are not uh, the uh, not really the customer backward approach. So a framework of prioritizing product features will make sure that you are actually building, uh, you are actually building for the customer. So a lot of times uh, as part of uh, uh, experiencing the e-commerce in India, I found that uh, when there is a problem with customer care, there are a lot of fancy chatbots which try to uh, solve for uh, the problem. There is a simple process management would help there. A simple uh, the optimization in terms of call center operations would help there. So, so these kind of diversions can be avoided if the right framework is in place. So uh, without much delay, if we get into the process of prioritization, uh, so the first thing you will begin uh, is you need to maintain a list of all the tasks or the projects uh, prior to uh, prior to uh, making uh, this framework or prior 
to making a scoring model it's important to keep maintaining this by uh, collecting all the feedbacks from the stakeholders it could be simple tool of uh, uh, excel if you're comfortable with or there are multiple tools in the market uh, like uh, ajira or a trello board which you can maintain you will keep updating this sheet based on uh, your own research of what customer pain points are or uh, by keeping your uh, ears wide open to feedback you will listen from the market and you can divide these items into different sets it could be uh, tasks or stories or epics or themes if i have to exemplify let's say i am a customer who needs to book a ticket on red bus for a bus booking journey a simple task would be searching for buses from point a to point b that would be a simple task versus a story would be building the entire uh, bus booking journey for particular route from point a to point b i come for i come to the website or i come to the app and search for a bus i select a bus i select a seat i make the payment and i book uh, book the ticket for uh, this particular route that would be a story and an epic would be of much more bigger scope that uh, building the bus booking journey not just for this route but building it for all the routes making sure that the inventory is present making sure that the right customers are coming and you have the right cost in place uh, you have all the payment options present so building that entire portfolio on the website or the app that would be called an epic so i just wanted to exemplify how you can uh, how you can uh divide your tasks into multiple buckets and not all the times you need to depend on the engineering team for real estimates but you can have your own uh, mental model here so uh coming to the prioritization charter once you have all these tasks defined you need to approach your stakeholders and make them feel more inclusive about the entire framework uh, you need to communicate the benefit of each of these epics or tasks or let's say stories and try to make it very uh, customer centric if you talk about some uh, complex algorithms or if you use some product jargons not everybody will understand and people will lose interest in your product road map it's very important to tell stories which people will be interested to listen to and uh, pay attention to in your product prioritization meetings or charters so the idea is to make everybody feel involved so that at the end of the exercise when you need support to launch a product you can hold people accountable and, and yes it's it's to make it more fun compared to just building the excel all by yourself so coming to the methods of communication uh, to the stakeholders there are two uh, major ones which are uh, followed typically one is giving a set of points to people and asking them to divide the points based on what features they feel are most important so uh, you can even try giving some currency points to people let's say in india we can give some 100 rupees uh, to different stakeholders and ask them to distribute those 100 rupees to buy different features and it's always a good practice to to ensure that people cannot see each other's choices because otherwise there would be biases that okay that person is choosing that feature uh, and i don't like that feature so let me pull it down by giving less number of points so so that kind of biases it can come we are human at the end so it's always good to avoid that uh, by giving a very you, you can uh, so circulate a form a google form probably where people cannot see each other's choice choices and then reveal the uh, the metrics at the end the second way of doing it is brainstorm with people and try to group different ideas there could be for example uh, going back to the bus booking journey which we discussed there could be uh, ideas in terms of getting the right customers or there could be ideas in terms of increasing the inventory or making sure that the right payment options are there or reducing the cost of business you can actually divide all these into different groups and then ask people to uh, prioritize over that so all similar ideas can be grouped into uh, different categories uh, so again coming to convincing the stakeholders once you have collected the ideas and and i'm sure uh, you will put your own ideas based on customer research you have done as well uh, the next part is to make sure a effective scoring algorithm or scoring model is present so that you can prioritize uh, in a very convincing way uh, 
So a very common approach there is to have a simple cost benefit analysis and make sure that it is very transparent to everybody. So one common thing is this two by two metrics where you have uh, the effort to build the product on one axis and the impact which it will make on one axis. So based on uh, the, the list of features which the stakeholders have selected, you can start plotting them here. And the effort here need not be a very deep level design effort to, to be given by the engineering team. As we just discussed about the epic stories and tasks, which I just spoke about, you can even put here based on your own mental model as well. And the only key point here is that you need to be convincing enough to people that why a particular story or a task is of low effort versus the high effort of another one. So once you start putting different features into this metric, if a feature comes under low effort and high impact for the customer, that would be the first priority for you as a product manager because why would you not want to prioritize it if it is a high value one which you can just launch in a short period or if the complexity is low. And uh, the second one would be that uh, the features which are of high value and of high uh, cost to build as well. So this is a very typical one you will uh, come across in your regular product management. And this is where you will have multiple features. And again, you might have to uh, you might have to analyze with a separate scoring model inside this second metrics as well. So, and the third one would be that uh, it would be low value. And although it's of low effort, you may not prioritize it over the first and second quadrant. And the last one is that it's high uh, effort and uh, the impact it would create also wouldn't be great. So it's a no brainer that you will not prioritize them over the one, two, three quadrants. So uh, coming back to uh, how do you prioritize between features uh, which which look to be high value and high effort. So one recommended uh, model is that uh, the weighted scoring one. Uh, let's say you have some uh, five features. I'm trying to exemplify here by dividing into different themes. And uh, the vertical metrics here is that you have one to five scoring and you try to give for each of these attributes uh, on, uh, on a scale of one to five. And the horizontal metrics is based on a score of 100. So let's say I want to build a loyalty-based uh, personalized uh, offer engine for customers, which will make me retain them more and have a uh, good loyalty build with uh, customers there. So the different attributes which I could define there will be on, will it give me more new users? Will it increase my transactions? And what could be the strategic value of launching this? And will my customers be delighted about it? So these are the benefits and out of 100 score, I have taken 50 for benefits and uh, the rest, uh, sorry, 60 for benefits and rest 40 for cause. And that 60 for benefits, I have divided into these attributes based on the business model, which I uh, consider to be at growth stage. So I gave less for uh, cost. I gave only 40 for cost versus 60 for benefits because this particular business I'm considering is at growth stage where I'm more concerned about building the top line or getting more users there. I'm not so worried about what is the cost to build that particular uh, product. So it's again subjective to your business model. So if you see here on scale of one to five, uh, what I've given is uh, for getting new users, this particular loyalty based engine will get top priority. It will get uh, five score compared to uh, the last one, design revamp of platform. So that I have kept as uh, low ranking as one because if I if I just revamp my entire platform, maybe it will give delight to customers. So the, the delight is five there, but it will not give me new users. But if you see the score for new users in this column, that is getting uh, a high score of 30 there. So this way I have calculated weighted score for each of these features. So if I have to walk you through the first one, it will be uh, the, the product sum of uh, 30 uh, times of 5, 20 times of 3, 10 times of 3. So all that is summed up here. And from here, I would subtract the cost required to build that product, which will be 30 times of 4 and 10 times of 2. And 
overall i would try to normalize this and uh, i got a score of 20 at the end for this particular feature so similar to this if i start scoring all these features which are listed for uh, for particular business i i see that uh, the the loyalty based offer engine is getting the highest rank here compared to anything else so there are uh, self supporting flows there are improvements on payment pages there are uh, regional language support uh, and then there is a revamp of platform and as per your uh, uh, priority of business and impact if you start scoring them you will have a very clear product charter so this is one way of getting clarity on features then the other way of pictorial representation or uh, other way of doing it with uh, with judgment when you don't have lot of numbers is uh, dividing the features into must be and uh, uh, performance wise and the attractive ones what you could do is what are the features which are very important to fulfill the main functionality which the customer is coming to you let's say customer is coming for uh, booking a bus ticket again going back to the previous example you should make sure that the simple product funnel of booking a ticket is working you you will not compromise there so that will be your basic need and you will always prioritize any issues coming in that funnel the second would be that the uh, the enhancements which customers looked for which they could appreciate and which could help in enhancing the uh, main functionality let's say uh, a payment for bus ticket was taking around 3 uh, 4 steps earlier and you reduce the navigation and you make it a simple to uh, simple process simple single click uh, process compared to a very complicated one so that is something which customers would appreciate the performance on and they would come back and repeat with you and the third category is very attractive ones or delighted ones uh, the features which customers would love to have but even if you don't have it's not like you will lose your business so if a customer is traveling on bus and let's say they are reaching the destination in another 15 minutes and you try to wake them up with a alarm on a phone which you which you automated by giving a call to them things like that so those are like good features they, those are delightful features but you will not uh, bend your back to launch them so so this is one model which is called as cano model in the market uh, it will help you prioritize if you do not have a very clear cut metrics there so uh so we are, we just discussed couple of uh, models but it's very important to have your own attributes your own uh, mental model based on the business because uh, it because every business will be in a different growth curve the customer segment will be different the market conditions will be different uh, what we launch in india as a, a growing market could be very different from what is launched in the united states for example so we need to be very cognizant about external factors as well uh, so for example if you are starting up in the market you want to disrupt a player who is already quite big so you will look for features which can differentiate you in the market you will not worry so much about uh, what it takes to build the product so this example which i have given here this is that kind of business where i would all i would always give more weightage to getting more new users so be very cognizant of this uh there are other other scoring methods as well uh for example i said that we will worry about uh the uh worry about getting new users there there are different uh, models of rise for example which will tell you what is the reach of audience how many customers you will cover with your feature what is the impact of the feature and they all they also ask you what is the confidence of estimating for that particular feature in case of e-commerce where the product launches are very agile uh, where the market changes very fast it would wouldn't be possible to have lot of confidence in the estimate one feature for example could have a good confidence of estimating versus another one which you're not sure of before uh, launching the launching in the market you want to experiment so there could be biases there so the rice model of uh, estimating or what the rice model of uh, scoring different features it's not very recommended for uh, agile method of uh, launching products if you are into waterfall methods or if you are 
and into the b2b uh, side of business maybe that will work more uh, so so yeah you need to choose based on the implementation cycles uh, again coming back to the uh, business i would divide mostly into the growth stage and well established uh, corporates so if you are in growth stage as we discussed it's more important to get the new users it's more important to cover different segments of customers you will not worry much about the cost of implementation uh, but again these will be the main uh, attributes you will think about in case of established corporates you will think about uh, what is the brand value if i launch a particular feature is it supporting my brand or is it tampering my brand are there any complaints or regulatory issues and are there any long pending technical debts which you need to clear off in order to scale up and uh, not cause complications in the technical architecture in future so priority wise your growth or incremental revenues will come down whereas your uh, customer trust customer brand and compliance will come on top whereas in case of growth you have seen that uh, the incremental revenues or user acquisition that's coming on top so and, and hence i'm saying that it's very subjective subjective to your own business uh, so coming to the things which you need to avoid and be very cognizant about a uh, lot of times we feel that if a product is complicated it's very cool and that needs to be prioritized first but we need to take a step back and think that uh, it's okay to do simple things the impact is what matters the most and uh, it's very rewarding to see at the end what customer problem you are solving rather than worrying about uh, the complexity of the solution or worrying about uh, the different stakeholders which you need to convince uh, so it, it could also happen that uh, during the uh launch or uh, during the uh, release phase of a project you get some blocker and uh, at at that point of time if you have to prioritize between uh, a product which is already into the development versus uh, a product which is very close to launch and it's getting blocked it's very judicious on uh, it's very subjective on you to make a decision there that uh, what what needs to come through uh, all the time the scoring models or frameworks will not be able to help so it's better you define some tenets that uh, in the beginning of product release cycles that maybe some 5% of the bandwidth in the sprint or 5% in the entire quarter for building the uh, products you will keep them parked towards such surprises which which could still come you cannot be prepared all the time for what what can come from the market so uh, at the end i would say that all the frameworks and models which you build please do not keep it to yourself it's always good to communicate transparently it's always uh, good to have a stakeholder meeting where you keep people inclusive and publish the frameworks very transparently uh, the one thing it will help you a lot is uh, people will not come back and question you in the middle of the uh, quarter or in the middle of the year that hey why did you prioritize feature a versus feature b you can always refer back to uh, the consensus which was established and you can always refer back to the voting which they have given and how uh, you have drawn uh, the consensus between stakeholders to arrive at that particular product which needs to be prioritized so you you always need to uh, keep going back to that uh, framework or going back to the past but make sure that you are flexible enough to accommodate the requests which come from the market as well so so there we are we uh, reach the uh, end of the presentation i hope you found it useful i hope you can uh, carry certain things from uh, the discussion we had and implement in your uh, product cycle uh, thanks for uh, giving us time and thanks to uh, product school for giving the opportunity uh, i'm available on linkedin this is my handle uh, shown here on the slide uh, you can always feel free to reach out to me thank you